Hey there Titans, in this video I'll show you how to configure the, ty the Titan SSO to use Salesforce session with a community user. Alright, so the first thing you'd want to do is make sure you have our form Titan package for Salesforce, the latest uh, package installed in your organization. Next thing you would want to do is head over to your My Account, Document Generation, and hit the Save button. And after that, you can start configuring your SSO. So let's head over to Push Settings Logs. We're going to click on the SSO grant access. We need to fill in the SSO login URL and our certificate and already pre-configured uh, connected app. So I'm at apps, app manager, and I have my Titan SSO connected app. And I'm going to hit manage. And we're going to grab the community URL since we're going to be using this for our community. And I'll put in the login URL. I'll grab my certificate and hit test. All right, we're good to go. We'll hit apply, we're connected. And let's put in some things on our form. So let's start with a hidden. Let's say we're gonna put this on the contact. So we'll pull in the contact ID and let's bring in some SSO parameter so we'll do SSO username. This will grab from the SAML we'll be getting from Salesforce. All right, let's put in the text box to display the uh, contact full name. So we'll do a name and let's put in a file upload to push to the contact. All right, place that over here. All right, let's head over to our get. So Salesforce integration get, I'm going to say get a contact and my condition is contact ID equals my contact ID and let's map in some fields. We'll do a name, we'll map that to the full name. All right, let's head over to our push. We're going to push a file. Our action is create. We're going to map the first published location ID to the uh, contact ID and our version data to the file upload. All right, so we have our get and push set up. Now let's head over to the SSO and set this up. So we're gonna head over to view more and click on the limits, click on the SSO, hit configure. And now what we wanna check is use Salesforce session and we'll need to select the Salesforce session from the SAML we'll be getting from the SSO. As we can see, we don't have that right now. So we'll need to add it as a custom attribute on our connected app. So we're going to click new on the custom attribute. We're going to call this Salesforce session. Insert a field on the API, API session ID. We'll hit save. And if we go back to our configuration, we see the Salesforce session and you notice I checked the use Salesforce community as well. This is required if you're using a community uh, with your SSO. Uh, the other thing I'll do, I'll map the SSO username to the username we'll be getting from the SAML, hit apply and save and we're all set up. Next thing we want to do is to create a visual force which we will embed in our community. So I'm going to click on publish to Salesforce. Make sure you tick the community. Our next thing is select our object which is contact and we'll select the contact ID and here is our page definition. So let's head over to our setup, visual force pages, create a new one. We'll call this community SSO and just paste in our page available for lightning experience and let's save the page. You want to make sure you give uh, access rights to the to this page to the community user uh, to the community profile you'll be using. In my instance, I'm just going to enable all profiles. Hit save. All right, now let's head over to our community and embed this in the contact page. So let's set all communities, 
I'll go to my community builder. And let's go to our contact detail page. And let's draw in our visual force. So visual force, we'll put it in the content header and community SSO is selected. Wonderful. And let's get 600. That's perfect. And we'll publish it. All right, now I'm gonna head over to my community and to my contact detail page. And I have this open in a different browser. I'm just going to drag this in here. So make this one big. All right. Let's head over to our home. And let's see how this does. So I'm going to head over to contacts. Select the contact over here. And let's select the file upload. Let's do donkey. And we'll select this guy and let's hit submit. Now let's see what happens. I'll head over to my account settings, to my integration logs, hit refresh. And this is a good error right here. Because when you use um, community user, you need to make sure that the you the community user has access and sharing for that object that, that you are doing so basically what happened right now is i did not have a permission to create a file on that contact so if i'll head over to my push so basically what i need to do right now is head over to my um, profiles and, and sharing rules and salesforce and make sure the user has permission for that to create the file under the contact. So if I'll head over to my Salesforce integration here, I'm just gonna remove the file since my user doesn't have permission to add the files on that contact. And I'll put in, a, let's say, a few more text boxes. And let's just bring in the last name. And I'll map it to my contact last name. And in my push, I'll remove the file and add an object. And say I want to update it. And my condition will be contact ID equals contact ID and hit apply, set the mapping. And my last name will go to the last name, apply and finish and save. Refresh this. And I'll hit submit. Let's do young one and hit submit. And I'll head over to my integration log and we have a contact update. And if I'll select this contact, let's open it, and we will see that it was last modified by Jack Rogers, which is our um, partner user. So that, that that's something to keep in mind. So whenever you use this session, uh, run as a Salesforce session, then we will use that current user that logged in with the SSO which means that that user will have to have all the permissions that he needs in order for to perform the actions that you want him to do on Salesforce. And this is how it's done. 